Carl with uh, Tabletop Tango. Thanks for uh, watching again. Today I want to talk about using Savage Worlds or playing Savage Worlds with Foundry. Um, I'm moving to Foundry for my new campaign from Roll20. And so I thought I'd look to see what was out there, what kind of uh, modules were available to make my life easier. And I found quite a few, um, or at least a couple, that uh, will make life easier, and I think I'll share them with you. And I wrote a couple scripts myself just to, or macros, just to make my life easier as well. I'm with, uh, again, like I said, Tabletop Tango. If you like what you see, please uh, like and subscribe. Love to see it. Um, but let's go ahead and get started um, looking at how we get Foundry set up for Savage Worlds. So let me move over to our screen. And the very first thing we want to do is go to the PEG site, uh, Pinnacle Entertainment Group, their website, go to the Savage Worlds Adventure, uh, Savage Worlds Adventure Edition Core Rules product, and right underneath that product, you'll find the Foundry Tabletop License. When you buy that, you get a, um, uh, a PDF that includes all the instructions on how to do what you need to do, and that is right here, I'll show that. Um, and that has all the information you need, um, everything from installation to the content to the macros that are available. And installation is really straightforward. After you buy it, you get a key, you'd go into your user profile, you'd put that premium content in, um, and then you'd go and you'd do an installation. You'd go download the module from the install add modules piece, which you've probably done if you use Foundry, you've probably already installed modules before, and then you're ready to go. Then when you create a world, you'd go and pick um, the Savage Worlds Adventure Edition as your game system when you create the world, and then you're ready to go. Um, uh, obviously, you'd have to go in and ma manage the modules and turn it on um, for use in your game, and I'll show a little bit of that. Uh, so let's jump over and let's see some of the modules that I do have uh, in my setup, and then I'll go through each one of them. Um, so now specifically for... Savage Worlds, uh, we have, um, like I mentioned, we have the Savage Worlds Adventure Core Edition rules uh, that we downloaded based using our key. We also um, have this item called Suede Macro Simple, which adds a, quite a few little nice little things like a card dealer, um, a combat tracker. Uh, so it's really kind of nice what it what it adds to the tool. Um, that one you can get by just doing an install or add module install. So then we have the Suede Toolkit, which uh, provides a couple of interesting things as well, which I'll, I'll show what that provides. And then the last thing is something that's not in, you know, add modules, which is the Suede Tools beta. It's, uh, it's called Suede Tools, but it's in beta, so you have to download it directly from the website. And I'll have... A, I'll have a link on that because, as we know, when we do an install module, we can put a manifest URL in here um, and then uh, be able to um, install anything that we have access to that's on the web. And so this, this product has a GitHub um, out there that we can access. Um, so let's get into the game and see what these tools do and then some of the scripts that I wrote myself. All right. So we're in... The, uh, in a game um, that I created called Test, um, Savage Worlds Test. And let's take a look at what we get um, with these modules. First thing, we want to go and manage modules and make sure that we have our macros, our toolkit, our Suede Tools beta all installed, as well as the Savage Worlds Adventure Edition core rules. Now, when you install this one, it'll go ahead and pull in the compendium folders because that's a dependency it has. So what, is, so what does the Savage Worlds, um, the core pinnacle, give you? Well, it gives you the ability to drag and drop. Start off, it gives you the ability to drag and drop um, items, like, for example, inventory. We can go to the compendium, and we can see there's a bestiary. We can see that there's items which represent our edges, our equipment. So if we want to add armor, for example, we can go to equipment. Um, let's pick some futuristic armor. And we just drag it over and it's now added into our sheet. So that's really nice and it gives you the ability then to, if you wanted to edit them, like your Gatling gun in your game is a little bit different, has different damage, what have you, you can go ahead and then change that. Um, but now it's just drag it in. Same thing works for edges. Um, same thing works for skills. You can just drag skills in and uh, have them available for use. 
Uh, one of the things it also does is it manages bennies. And as you see down here, um, it shows the bennies that I have as the game master. And then if I click on minus, it will decrease those um, those bennies. Um, you can see that if I right click, I can give myself a benny. Um, and when the players are logged in, you'll see the list of players as well, and you can give them bennies. And so you can manage bennies. Another thing that's kind of nice is it gives you the templates. Um, so you got your cone, you have your small blast, medium blast, and you can just throw those on however you want to do what you need to do. Um, very nice. Um, and so there's there's other things. Obviously, it has the um, ability to do uh, autom to do the cards um, for the different combat. So if we're going through the combat, um, it'll deal. I have this particular player character set up to have. Um, level-headed, and so it gives me a choice to which card I want to use because I have level-headed, and then we go with that. Um, so how do we set that up? Um, we have a few things that the the sheets include, um, and one of them is under tweaks. We can go ahead and say what's the initiative items that this person has um, so that we can then have it automatically be implemented as part of our uh, combat tracker. It also allows you to manage the different states. Now the core doesn't have a way of linking it to the character where you know you have these uh, status effects. Um, it's not linked in the core and that's one of the scripts that we'll add um, to uh, handle that. So let's go ahead and actually do that. Let's talk about the modules um, that we added in. So I go to manage modules. The first thing I did was I added in the suede simple macros and what that does is add a couple of cool macros um, that makes life really easy, especially if you want to do things like chase. Um, so if I go into the compendium, under the default folder, um, because default is in the compendium uh, compendium folders, anything that does not have a folder defined is, gets into the default. And so we have these suede macro simple. Um, and so we can go ahead and click on that. We'll see that there's three scripts i won't go through the adventure card but there's a way of managing if you upload the cards you can then deal the adventure cards and handle that what i will show though is card draw and combat flow which are two very nice little scripts so i already dragged them to my hot bar here and so i'll just go use that so the first one is the card dealer which will deal cards onto the playing surface Foundry does not do a great job with cards to start with. Um, so there's really no easy way to deal cards. So if we're doing chases, we're kind of out of luck. But this little this little guy really helps out. So let's say we're doing a chase. We're, so we got nine cards. We'll go ahead and draw them after we put all the um, all the um, these parameters in. Wow, look at that. Probably have a flush in here somewhere. But so it deals out the cards onto the onto the thing as um, tiles and so we can manipulate them just like tiles we can delete them we can do whatever um, but it's really nice for obviously doing things like chases um, and anything that you need to get cards out on the playing surface um, so that's that's a nice little part of script it also has this combat work as combat flow which we'll take a look at and so if you go ahead and you let's get back to selection if you select a target and then you select the individual who's going to attack that target. This workflow will take you through, um, do you want to do melee, do you want to do ranged? We'll say melee. Um, if we've got the weapon, and when you looked at the character and I was dragging things on, you might have noticed I had a great ax as one of the pieces of equipment I had dragged in already. And so if you have that, you can add in all the, the mods that you have and then you can do an attack. And it'll automatically roll up um, sort of a nice full attack. It shows what we are trying to hit, which is, you know, the parry. Um, it shows us what our roll was. It shows that 11. It compares it to the 6. It says our result is we got a raise. We can re-roll do a Benny automatically, or we can do our roll damage since we hit with a raise. Um, confirm. And then we get our result, which was 16. That says that this guy was shaken, and he took one wound. So that's it's really it it's really streamlines the process a lot, which is really nice to be honest. Um, so those are a couple of macros that I think make life life a lot easier um, with this 
with this particular script. Um, the next one is the toolkit. So manage modules, we have the Suede toolkit. And what that offers is um, a couple of a couple of scripts here. If we look in our folder, where you can do NPC man, man, uh, randomizer, sorry, and you can do a compendium patcher, which takes all the actors you have and, and patches them for the rules um, that you have. It also offers, if we look in the configuration for this module, it also offers the ability to link status effects. So the, sh the sheet where if you click on Shaken, you'll see it pop up here, which was one of the limitations. It does skill active effects, so you can create an effect that links to a skill. So if you click on, so if you turn it on, you'll get that plus. If you turn it off, it'll go away. Um, and it shows you how to set that up. And then last is this macros where we got those two macros in our macro directory. So I turned on this enable skill effects, and I'll show you how that works. It's pretty cool. I didn't link the status effects because I want to show you that beta of the Savage Worlds tools, which I think does it so much better. Um, so we'll go with that one instead. Um, so we go ahead and we change that. So let's go look at our character that we had. Um, so I already cre created an active effect. And so if you look at this guy, um, he takes that M exclamation point. Remember there was a D exclamation point and M exclamation point and he affects notice. And so he gives a bonus to notice whenever he's on. So if you look at the effect being on, we got that plus two to notice. If we turn it off, it gets rid of the plus two to notice. So you can use this to take, and the mechanical effects that come from your edges and whatnot, you can actually define them and have them set up so you have one button click um, to make them work. Um, so we roll our notice. That plus two is added in automatically for us. So we have four, five, six, it's eight ultimately because it added that plus two in. Um, and it shows that up here, that trait modifier. Very nice, very cool. Um, took a while, we were just banging our heads when we were putting our sheets together. We really wanted to do this and we were like, well, is that just only for D&D? &D? And um, it was nice that this, I found this script and it does some, or this, uh, this module with this script that does some nice stuff. Now the last thing I wanna show is, if we go back to this manage modules, is the Savage Worlds Tools Beta, this toolkit. It does a really good job of a couple of things. It handles um, things like jokers and handing out bennies, uh, giving plus two to the player uh, in combat. But the thing I really like about it is um, it provides this uh, the, the status linkage, but it does it in a really nice way. Um, so if, if we click on stun, for example, it automatically will say, well, stun means you're distracted and vulnerable. And then it'll go ahead and show those here um, and link them, link them in. So we can manipulate this. And I like the icons it uses um, versus the standard one. So I, I really like this particular one better than, um, you know, basically doing it by hand, um, which is so, which is pretty cool. Now, the one thing that would be which would be nice is to be able to quickly, you know, if you're not recognizing these icons, say, well, what is this and what do they do? And so I wrote a script, which I'll have a link to my script, which is called um, status. And for anything that's selected, we click on status and it goes ahead and tells us what those statuses are and gives me the um, sort of the summary of what that means. Um, so this person's vulnerable, stunned and distracted. And so distracted is minus two on trait roll. So it, it's, it helps me out. It's kind of nice for players um, so they can quickly find things out that they need to find out. Another one that I added uh, that goes back to the Fast Furious fun is I don't want to create an NPC for every time I want to do rolls or um, uh, anything against a player. And so I created a real simple macro called Dice, um, which just brings up a quick roller and I can just click one of these and it'll drop the roll in the window. It'll show what the roll is and it'll show what the wild die is. And if it's an extra without a wild die, I just use this value. If it's, um, you know, should be a wild card and that wild die makes sense, then I will use that one. But it's just really quick to do a fast roll when you need, when you need a value. Um, so that's a script that I wrote to make my Savage Worlds life a little easier. And uh, one of the final ones I'll show is uh, the tools that Savage Worlds Tools also includes its own attack macro that you can use. 
And what that one does is it works a little different. Um, it shows you the things that you already have installed. So let's use that axe grate again. And this time it rolls and it shows a miss and that's all it does. If you, if we do it again, until we get a hit, if you get a hit, then you can click on this and it'll go ahead and roll damage for you and show you that. So it's not quite as sophisticated, but it's, uh, it's there in case you want to use it. A couple of other things that I found, um, so I did the status script and I did my roll script. I also have uh, a give Benny script. So you can give Bennies to the players by right clicking over here and then say add a Benny. Um, I, most of the time I'm right here working and so what I want to do is, um, you know, when I'm looking and I say, oh, you did really cool, I, I'd rather just click on the character and then do a give Benny and then I'll add Benny to that actor, that tokens actor just like if I would have right clicked here on the player and did it. So um, that's another thing I do to make my life a little easier um, to you know, manage my uh, Benny giveaways. Uh, so, let's, so let's talk a little bit about what we've done so far. So let's talk about what we've done. So what did we do? We installed the PEG, um, you know, the Savage Worlds official, because that adds all the things with the compendium, rules, drag and drop, everything you need, character sheet. And then I brought the macros in because the macros gave me my card dealer that I really needed um, for chase scenes and that sort of thing. And it gives that combat workflow, which makes life a little easier there. Um, went ahead and installed the uh, toolkit, which provided a couple of simple things, um, as well as uh, allowing to link those attributes, um, pluses or minuses and effects uh, to your roles. And then the last thing was the Savage Worlds tool beta, which provided, um, it did have a attack workflow, but more importantly, it did a really nice job of being able to link statuses to those checkboxes on the, on the character's page. Um, so those are what I use to make my Savage Worlds um, environment nice and useful for me. Um, hopefully those are useful for you. Um, the scripts that I, I use that I wrote personally are simple, but they do a job that I needed them to do. So I'll have a link to that. I'll have a link to the other scripts or uh, modules that I used and we'll, um, we'll hopefully play Savage Worlds together sometime. But anyway, I'm Carl with uh, Tabletop Tango. And if you liked it, uh, like, subscribe. Um, I like making these videos and I'd love to know that people like them too. So now we can play Savage Worlds on Foundry, which is the new hotness, and have a good time with it. So thanks much. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Oh, it's a savage world. Strange as a weird world. It's a savage world. Fossils to explore. It's a savage world.